So what a crazy, horrendous weekend that was. Protests going on all over the world and absolutely rightfully so after, I want to say a murder, but after many, many murders, many, 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 we're seeing young black men in particular being murdered because of the color of their skin. We as a society cannot accept that. What's going on at the moment is, is very, very positive. You know, without people standing up to power, nothing ever changes. And so first step for any change is people to stand up for power, which is exactly what's happening right now. I'm physically, mentally, emotionally drained, but I also left the weekend feeling really, really empowered. I did go to the Black Lives Matter march in Manchester. It was something that's really important to me and it's gonna to continue to be important to me as a black man in the UK. Our race issues aren't as obvious and they aren't as bad as they are in the US, but they're definitely here and they're definitely present. The racism in the UK is more hidden and intertwined into institutions. And it's important that I went out and I voiced my opinion on what was happening. I think what's really important is that we don't stay silent at a time like this. I think there's a lot of fear from business leaders of, of well, there's two sides to the argument. With this, I just don't believe that there are two sides to the argument. I think every reasonable person is aligned here that this is unacceptable and has to change. I think a lot of people are scared to speak out, especially if they're not black at the moment. But I think people are scared then to be kind of question that you're following a trend. This is about humanity, it's not a trend. But I think yeah. in the UK, we do need to speak out more. We need to be less scared of what other people think. If you're getting shit for what you're saying, they're not your friends. Time and time again, you see this on the news and nothing gets done. It's about time that something changes. I'm also like, feel like with the writers and looters it's being misrepresented somewhat. It's obviously not great to like loot and, and, and whatnot, but it comes from a frustration where protests have not been listened to for years and years. There's two sides that you can currently be sitting on. Like some people, like my mum, for example, I know my mum is fuming. She's so, so angry. That is how most people are reacting. But I hate to say it, but it's gotten to a point where this happens so, so often that you almost become numb to it. And it's not that you get used to hearing the stories, like you'll never get used to it, but you become so numb to it that it doesn't shock you anymore. And I think that is what my reaction is. It's not great to see, but I mean, I saw a video online of a, a black store owner chasing off looters. And instead of police chasing looters, they arrested the black store owners. It's just something that's bizarre. And I feel like something has to be done differently in order to get that a point across because they've been doing peaceful things all, all the time and it just nothing gets done. And it's just the same thing over and over again. I'm not shocked anymore. I'm just exhausted. I'm exhausted by constantly feeling like I have to defend my existence and educate people and explain to people why my life matters. I have received a lot of backlash from people in my community from attending the protests last weekend, obviously due to the current pandemic, which I'm obviously aware about. Coronavirus disproportionately affects BAME communities, but BAME communities are also disproportionately killed by police. These are two battles that just kind of happen to coincide at the same time, unfortunately. It would have been better if they didn't, but I guess it's kind of the less of two evils. I'm obviously worried about there being a potential second spike, and I'm worried that the spikes is going to be blamed on people protesting. I think a lot of people are kind of quick to jump on the bandwagon of attacking protesters for a potential second spike when everyone's kind of ignored the fact of the street parties that happened on V Day or the thousands that flocked to the beaches on South End or Brighton over the past weekend. It's a movement and people are dying either way, so we have to march and we have to get our voices heard.